Hey everyone, and welcome to the IH Bada Bing Lounge. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Sopranos lately, I'm sorry. <laughs> why, why don't we operate out of a strip club, Jimmy? Uh, it's expensive. Yeah, it always comes down to finances. You're our numbers guy, Jimmy. You're supposed to make it work. Can you get a better job? <laughs> All right, we'll work on that. <laughs> we'll work on some advertising first. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Hey, we're open to strip clubs advertising with us, for the record. I have no problem going all Bad News Bears, the remake on this. No, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> but as always, my name is Dominic Damore, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the second, maybe third best thing you've heard all week. We have a great show for you today that includes a top-notch film review of... A mediocre to bottom-notch film, depending on who you ask, as well as the results for last week's box office. As always with me is my co-host, James Langos. Hello, everyone. Uh, the movie Dom and I saw today was, or not today, this past weekend, was Warcraft. Yeah, the uh, video game turned movie. Yeah, much anticipated, based off of one of the highest-selling PC games of all time and uh been long in development and a little bit of a uh linchpin in the video game movie industry going forward if if this movie doesn't do well who knows what we'll see i want to start off saying that i don't think you have ever played the game uh no i have not nor have i nope so we have no real um knowledge of the film other than just a regular movie fan yeah exactly but I have seen several commercials, so I think I'm pretty informed. (laughs) Fair enough. If you guys aren't aware, this film basically, it takes place in a fantasy realm uh, a la Lord of the Rings, but a bit more futuristic and uh, uh, a bit brighter, I would say. Uh, Much more CGI'd. A lot more. Yeah, but the basic concept is there is a world of orcs and the world of men. They cross over, and war ensues as the orcs try to take over what the men have, and the men try to stop them. So, Jim, why don't you go into some of your positives for the movie? I thought the story was pretty good. Um, It was a little confusing at times, but I just compare it to Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones just throws a ton of names at you, and you have to try and follow along, and if you can't, you have to Google them without (laughs) finding any spoilers is difficult at times <laughs> but other than that i thought it was an interesting story it definitely kept me more focused with all the different names and trying to figure out who's who um closer towards the end i kind of just gave up and just started watching it for for what it actually is <laughs> just an action cgi movie the main character i believe his name is andon lothar yeah i'll just go with lothar lothar um played by travis fimmel yeah, I, I thought he did a terrific job. Do you watch that show on uh, History and Vikings? I have not. Yeah, I have not seen it. I've heard great things about it, and I've heard great things about him in that show. Yeah, and Everyone that I know watches it. They, they love it, and they yeah. love him. Yeah, and to be honest, this movie made me want to check out that movie, because I thought Travis Fimmel was amazing. Like He was the best part of the movie for me, Absolutely. personally. He did a great job. Yeah. Um, beyond his performance, which I'll get into in a minute... Uh, what you talked about with the abundance of names, I'm a, I'm a bit torn on that. I'm not quite ready to put that in my positives, but at the same time, I respect the writers of the film for not treating the audience with kid gloves. Yep. Because so often in these type movies, you see like they'll introduce a character with a weird name, and then they'll immediately show him on screen and like give a detailed background of oh. Yes, you have to go find Medivh because he is the leading guardian wizard who f- gets his powers from this place and this place, and he's been with us for thousands of years. In this movie, it was just straight up like, yeah, no, you got to go find the guardian. What the hell's the guardian? What is the guardian? Yeah, like, it raised a lot of questions when while you're watching this and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, and that was literally just one character out of the ten that they introduced in that moment. Yep. So, pardon me once the... Like I, I condemn, well, not condemn. I uh, condone the acts of the writers in that form, but it was a lot to take in. And who knows? Maybe if we were better followers of the video games, we would have picked a few more things out. But it was, it was a tough to follow at first. But on to Travis Fimmel, Lothor. Uh, he plays a very 
Viggo Mortensen from Lord of the Rings type role. He's a bit more fun, a bit more sarcastic. Um, yeah, but a knowledgeable character that, that shows his emotions on his sleeve for sure. Yeah. And that's a good... I'm glad you brought that up because this movie was way more emotional than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Like, I found myself definitely invested in some of the characters, particularly Lothar and some of the heavy CGI'd orc I was not expecting to be so involved with. And I think that goes to just the, the dialogue and, and the emotions that you could see on the orc from the CGI, which helped. Yeah. It made him feel real and important. Yeah. Um, let's go on a little bit more to some of the other people in the cast. Uh, the orc that I mentioned before, who kind of felt a connection to, was played by Toby Kebbell, which comes as no surprise to me because I think he's a great actor. Some of you might know him from movies like uh, the recently made Fantastic Four. Don't hold it against the guy. He plays Doctor Doom, and he's only in the movie for like eight minutes, what it feels like. But he's a great actor. He was also in another awful movie uh the sorcerer's apprentice that came out a couple years ago with nick cage but he's a really good actor and i'm not surprised that he was able to bring that kind of emotion through a cgi character another actress that um initially i thought was just in there for her pretty face (laughs) um paula Patton. she actually did a pretty decent job um i was thoroughly impressed and i thought it was going to be a lot worse tom what'd you feel yeah, I um, I think I've mentioned her a couple times on the podcast. I think Paula Patton is an awful actress. I think she gets 90% of her roles just because she's attractive. But I have to give her credit. In this movie, I, I did not hate her. Like I wouldn't say I was particularly in love with what she did with the character, but she didn't take away from the movie. And but She had a decent amount of screen time, too. Yeah, and they helped her out. Like They gave her some broken uh, English for her dialogue, which makes it a little bit easier for her like she doesn't have to convey that deep of emotion but overall i i thought she was solid to be honest um unlike as i drift off into my negatives dominic cooper the king boring yeah a little bit didn't do anything crazy yeah you guys might know him he was in uh abraham lincoln vampire slayer and he has that show coming out on amc or is already out preacher which is getting grave reviews and the guy's a great actor. It's just in this movie, he come, came off as flat, and I don't really know why they created a storyline with him. And I think that was one of my major problems with this film. It's a bit bloated. Yeah, there's a lot of characters, and not everyone could be developed yeah. as much as you wanted them to be. Yeah. To me, this is it's a. I, in, I wrote this in my review that you can find online at www.ihbpodcast.com. It should have been a two-man or more accurate one-man, one-orc story. It should have followed Travis Fimmel's Lothor, and it should have followed Toby Kebbell's uh, Dortan. I agree. It would have been a little bit easier to follow. Mm -hmm. Um, And those are the two characters that you feel the most emotion for. Absolutely. How about about you? Let's give uh, the audience one of your negatives. One of the very large negatives and could possibly be the biggest of all time uh, was was the ending they uh they basically just tried setting up for a sequel and the movie didn't really end i mean people died but it didn't end it just felt like it was just a continuing story duratan he died spoilers which sucked cuz i didn't want him to at all <laughs> And then a throwaway death was uh, the king, Dominic Cooper. Yeah, who I just mentioned, yeah. Who was a throwaway death. I mean, I didn't really care if he died or not. Yeah. I, mean, his, <clears throat> his, I guess it was important yeah. to, to set up the next movie. His death had meaning, but it meant nothing for this movie. Yeah. Because the entire time, because I'm with, right there with you, I, I have major issues with the ending of this movie. To the point where going into the ending... I was at a solid like seven, seven point three on my scale of one to good will hunting, and I was like, because all the reviews I'd heard like they were very mixed, and I was like, where's everybody mixed on these? This is a solid movie. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, is it a little over CGI to point? Sure, but I mean, you can't practical effects all of this stuff. It, this movie would cost three hundred million dollars. Yeah, but 
the ending is so sequel baited, hashtag sequel bait, that I don't have a whole lot of pet peeves. Bad child actors are one. When you screw up the physics in movie, like a hockey stick stopping a ninja sword. Check that out last week's episode to uh, hear about all about that. And number three, focus on the movie you're currently filming. I don't want you to set up a franchise. I want you to make a good film now, and then retroactively in the next film, you can go back and be like, oh, Time Wizard. That never happened anymore. I'm cool with it. Like, screw it. But give me one solid movie first. I agree. They they really need to um, stop setting up these franchise movies and trying to make everything like a five-movie story. It's really killing the integrity of the film the original film that they're trying to make Mm -hmm. even like uh something like the lord of the rings which this movie i think compares very well to them Mm -hmm. um it's that science fiction fantasy type film you get groups of men groups of orcs stuff like that dwarfs yeah where this movie matches up really well is because the the original trilogy from lord of the rings They end on very sequel baity moments. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the questions raised in that movie usually get answered. Yeah. If you have a big bad guy in that movie, aside from Sauron, who's never really a big bad, you just see him off in the distance like, oh, that's the guy. But he doesn't have any lines or anything like that. Like in number one, the big bad guy is the Urukai, the giant Urukai guy. Who eventually, spoilers, puts three arrows in Sean Bean's chest. Mm-hmm. He's the bad guy. He dies again. Yeah. Why? Why is he always dying? So, he dies in the first one. In the second one, tough to say there's an actual bad guy. Oh, no. Um, You could say Solomon, the white wizard who Gandalf defeats. Mm-hmm. You could say he's the main bad guy of number two. He loses. In number three, obviously, it's Sauron. In this movie... There's two big bad guys. One of them's not really a bad guy, and you don't really care if he wins or loses. But the one that you actually hate, the orc, it, nothing happens to him. Like he doesn't even—he doesn't even get dropped down a notch. It's just like, oh, well, I'm still fighting, and no, nothing he, really happens. He quite possibly gets stronger. Yeah, arguably. I mean, at the end, he's um, pulling everyone's souls. Yeah, I would. I don't really understand all of it. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a ton of issues. The main issue was just the last fourth of the movie, really, was just going all out for the next one. And who knows if they're even going to get one? Because... It's true. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the box office, but it's it, it's an interesting situation. This is something we very rarely see nowadays. Yeah. Uh, you want to go into your rating for the movie? Sure. Um, because I enjoyed the film thoroughly... Up until the end, I'm still going to give it a pretty good rating. I know you're going to go a different direction with that one. <laughs> but I'm going to go with like a f- five and a half, six, somewhere in the, the middle of the pack range. Because it was entertaining and it was interesting for three quarters of the movie. And that's a lot better than a lot of the other movies we've seen recently. Very true, yeah. So I'm going to stick with like a five and a half, five, six, somewhere in there. Gotcha. I can't really decide yet. <laughs> I don't entirely disagree with your sentiment. Um, there, there is the first three quarters of the movie, like I said, utterly enjoyable, but the last section, it just killed my will to live. Like there were so like those are harsh words. Yeah, because there were so many moments where like I was literally sitting in the theater, like, oh no, they didn't do no. that, did they? No, over and over, I'm like, they're not answering that. They're not answering that. Oh crap. So, I'm I'm going to 3.8. Yeah. Dropped hard. Yeah, a, a solid four and a half point drop, realistically, for me. Part of the explanation for that drop is, all right, I was at like a 7.3 going into it. And that was with me kind of ignoring the parts that I wasn't liking up to that point because of the type of movie that we were getting. We were getting just the straightforward action adventure movie. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not looking for super deep character development or the lore both or gave us some of that solid stuff and uh so did toby cavill's character but by the way the movie ended 
so much of that emotion that I had was wasted. Like, Doritan's entire story arc practically ruined because of what exactly? Like, his sacrifice doesn't mean anything. All of the orcs are still following the evil orc. And now they're... Goldan. Goldan, yeah. There's just so many... There were there was questions one, two, and three going into the end. They didn't answer. They answered the question one. They still didn't answer question two and three. But then they added question four, five, and six. So it just I, I couldn't get over it. And honestly, I left the theater angry. I agree, but I'm not going to kill it on its rating for that because thinking of movies like The Bronze, which was bad almost the entire way through yeah i can't put it in that same category as that one i hear you and i mean it's tough i just i don't want to reward that kind of action i agree i agree all right so you guys have heard what our ratings would be if you saw the film and judging by the fact you live in north america most likely if you listen to this and how much it brought in this weekend you probably didn't but if you did see the warcraft let us know what your rating out of one to Goodwill Hunting would be. Suit us an email to ihbpodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at ihbpodcast. Next up, we have the box office battle, a competition for bragging rights between friends who want nothing more than to prove they know more than the other guy and who buys the first round of drinks, of course, this week. How the game works is each week, my co-host and I will predict the top five films at the box office. Whoever gets the closest to the correct order wins the point for the week. Dom, why don't you tell the people who won again? I did. I have reclaimed, uh, I have reclaimed the lead in the uh, vaunted IHB box office showdown. Um, a back atop my rightful place as the leading point earner. But uh, the results for last week are as follows. Taking the number one spot was the spooky horror sequel, The Conjuring 2, earning an impressive... $40.4 million in its debut. In second place, another debut film, Warcraft, with James and I just broke down, was only able to muster a measly $24.4 million, only barely beating out the third spot film, Now You See Me Too, which brought home $23 million in its first weekend. Fourth place goes to last week's winner, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows, earning an additional $14.8 million. And finally, Rounding out the top five was X-Men Apocalypse, earning $10 million in its third week. As I said, I did win this week. Mm -hmm. With that being said, James, what are your thoughts on the numbers from last week? I'm not too surprised, other than I thought Warcraft was going to do a lot better. I'm kind of disappointed in that. I thought that number was going to be a little bit higher. But Conjuring 2 doing well for a horror film in the summer. Yeah, which uh, is early pretty June. impressive. And then the Now You See Me kind of expected that. Didn't look like that good of a sequel. Um, they kind of recasted some people, yeah, which is cause for con- concern, usually. You would, you would think so, but I saw this movie, and the recasting worked well. Granted, I like Isla Fisher as an actress, but I like Lizzie Kaplan more, and I thought she fit in seamlessly. The reasoning behind her being in the movie is a little sketchy, but... At the same time, Isla Fisher was always more of a placeholder for me. Like, oh, we need a girl. She's kind of funny at times. Isla Fisher will do. But now we have Lizzie Kaplan, and she brought more gravitas to the role. So that's a great word. I thought so. You should have seen me try to spell it when I get, wrote my review. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was rough. <laughs> Thank God for spell check. Exactly. Um, but when you screw it up that bad, it becomes it a real hindrance. No results found? No. Like, I kept getting gravity toss. Yeah. Like, no. Sandra Bullock is not up in this bitch. Yep. And then X-Men getting another $10 million. Yeah. Do you know what the, the total is for that? X-Men... 136. Uh, I got 477 worldwide. 136 domestic. Yeah, so, I mean... Yeah. It's not horrible. I mean, 477 worldwide is nothing to shake your head at. Especially the third... Well, third in this current trilogy. Yeah, third in this current trilogy. Yeah, it's like the ninth one overall. Um, Holy crap. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, just to throw some numbers at you guys, uh, The Conjuring 2's budget was $40 million, so it made its budget back in its opening week weekend. Very nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, just domestically, too. I mean, that's yeah. not even counting uh, the worldwide. Mm-hmm. 
um, film uh, opened up to a similar number that the first one did. The first one opened to around forty-one million, so it beat it out barely. Uh, the first film beat it out barely, I should say. Um, and that film took in over three hundred million worldwide. So, and it's got a seventy-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. So, considering it's a horror film, that's pretty solid because those movies don't always get well reviewed. Mm-hmm. Warcraft. On the other hand, is twenty seven percent right now in Rotten Tomatoes, and that movie had a hundred and sixty million dollar budget. But you look at the number twenty four million, and you're like, "Oh my god, it bombed!" But then you hear about the numbers it's currently doing in China, hundred and ninety million dollars in China. Yep. Which, for the record, I heard this today on Collider Movie Talk, which you guys. Uh, might recognize some of the format similarities, <laughs> but they said that The Force Awakens, Star Wars Episode Seven, in its entire run in China, earned just over a hundred million dollars. Wow! Yeah. Now, granted, Star Wars isn't as popular in China for some odd reason, and World of Warcraft clearly is. But one hundred ninety million. This movie could get a sequel because it, it realistically, I don't think it makes even a hundred million at the Domestic box office. This movie could get a sequel off of its China numbers alone. Yeah, and you know, if you guys listened to last week's episode, Dom did say that China loves CGI heavy movies. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, I mean, this movie already is at three hundred and four million dollars worldwide. It's a lot of money. Yeah, that's crazy numbers. Like that's X Men numbers, mm-hmm. and with a awful box office for home. Yep. Uh, now you see me too. Also not rated fresh, 35%. Uh, the first film opened to $29 million. This one obviously did about $6 million less and added $15 million to the budget to a total of 90 as opposed to 75 for the first one. Not looking good for them. No, but this is also a weird movie Like, because the, f- the first one didn't make a ton at the box office, but apparently it did super well in VOD and stuff like that. And the studio, from what I hear, is just hoping that they did similar numbers. I'm sure they're not crazy, but because they added another $15 million to the budget, that they're getting $6 million or so less at the box office. So I'm sure they would have wished for something in the 30s. But at the same time, it's a solid film. I think it'll do well on cable. And there's still potential we'll see a third. Next weekend is going to be interesting. I'm just thinking crazy now. This is crazy talk. Is it because Jesse Eisenberg was so hated for Batman vs. Superman? Normally, I would say yes, but I feel like the marketing material hid him well enough. Because to be honest, from the trailers, I can only remember him in one scene. The scene where he's where making he, it rain? Yeah, and he falls backwards. And like, not at a strip club. Yes, and that's a very cool scene, and they, it was cool in the movie. Not that it makes any sense in... Mag- practical Physics. magic terms, yeah. But these movies were never about making practical magic sense. Although they did a better job of explaining some stuff in this movie. So I'll give them credit. As opposed to the first one, where now you see me, they're like, we did a magic trick, and you know it's fake, but we're not going to tell you how we did it fake. So I think they hid Jesse Eisenberg a little bit, okay. and that's possible for the marketing material. But that $6 million difference, I don't think this film got Eisenberg. I love it. It's so good. It is now our cover photo for the Facebook page. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then just for my own personal ego, I had uh, the first four movies correct. I missed the fifth one. I had Me Before You, the Nicholas Spark film, coming in fifth. It actually came in sixth, and I only missed it by about a million dollars. So I'm going to pop my collar on that. You know, I think if we would have had our top five you took all your good ones and i took my one good one we would have had all of them because <laughs> i'm pretty sure i had x-men at number five yeah all right so what do you guys think of the box office results you guys can let us know on the facebook page that i just mentioned that's the i've had better facebook page jim let's go into our picks for next week and see if you can regain some ground all right um dom and i have the same order yeah it was not discussed beforehand nope um, so we're going to go down to what we think our number one movie is for this week and uh, the dollar amount that it's going to be. Yeah. So I'm going to start off with number one, it's going to be Finding Dory because it's another Pixar movie and the sequel to Finding Nemo. 
which everyone loved. Um, Central Intelligence at number two, because it's got a little heart and a big Johnson. Exactly. <laughs> One of my favorite marketing campaigns of oh, all time. Oh, it was time. genius. It was so good. Um, Conjuring 2 at number three, because, I mean, if it, even if it drops 50%, it's still $20 million. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's still it's going to beat out Now You See Me and... Yeah, Now You See Me and Warcraft. Yeah, those movies barely passed a million in their debut weeks. Yep. So Warcraft number four, and then Now You See Me at number five. And I don't need to talk about those two. <laughs> I have a similar list, so I can't really say anything different. The only thing I will say, Now You See Me is not a bad movie. On the website, I actually gave it a 6.3 out of 10, which would be fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a, If you have the right attitude going in, it's a it's a fun, enjoyable movie. It's not particularly deep. Lizzie Kaplan has some moments of uh, fun. Mark Ruffalo has some great action scenes, actually, uh, which is something you rarely see from him. They, they He did a cool thing where he mixed magic with his fight. Not like the magic where they don't explain it. Like practical stuff where he's hiding next to a mirror. Some dude goes to punch him and he punches the mirror instead. That mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Or... Sliding down a trap door. And that was a fun scene to watch. So, Mark Ruffalo was a uh, definite positive for the movie. It's good. Yeah. So, now that we've told everybody that we have the same list, what's your prediction for Finding Dory? I'm going to go kind of big here. Yeah? I'm going to go 80 million. 80 million. 80 million. That's a solid number. I think they've done a great job marketing. And everyone absolutely loved Finding Nemo. So, I think it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull something big. Yeah. I'm going to go the other way, actually. Um, Surprise, surprise. Yeah. I don't think they've done a particularly great job marketing. Like, I haven't seen a giant push or anything. I think they've released a couple of trailers. But for the most part, I... Granted, maybe I'm not shopping in, like, the Gusher section anymore, so... That's a shame you should be. I probably should. Gushers were so good back in the day. Fruit by the foot? Yeah. No. I was more of a fruit roll-up kind of man. They're kind of the same thing, aren't they? So They're close, but I mean... Same texture, yeah. taste, yeah. just a different way of eating it. Yeah. Just the fruit by the foot. It always, when I was a small young child, it felt like there was so much more. But now you grow up and you're like, a foot's not that big. But back to the main point, not that we're <clears throat> going to keep talking about our childhood snack packs from... Uh, snack packs, also another good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched Billy Madison the other day, too, so that's what made me think of it. By the way, speaking of Billy Madison, on our website, that's www.ihbpodcast.com, you can check out an actor profile from last week with none other than Adam Sandler. Beautiful segue, by the way. I thought so. <laughs> but... We did not set that up whatsoever. No, it just... It, it's a flow. It's a... We, we've got that inert connection. Um, my guess for Finding Dory is going to be $65 million. The first one, Finding Nemo, opened to like 70 And a combination of the fact that I think the box office overall this year is down. Um, from what I hear, it's down like 22%. Granted, that could be because certain movies, like there haven't been as many hits back to back. And they bunched up too many of the solid movies early on. Like Batman vs Superman and... Uh, X Men and Captain America, so I'm I'm going with 65, which is still a good number. It's just I could be wrong. And for the record, we're not going to do the if you go over, you're out. We're going to do straight dollar. I bet 65, you bet 80. If it comes up as 75, you're going to win. Gotcha. Yeah, just. That over, it's too difficult. You to don't do like that. prices right rules. I like it in most situations, but in this one, like you went eighty, and I, I don't think it's gonna go eighty. So I could have went like if you go seventy nine. I mean, if it goes seventy nine, you still win. By yeah, that. and because also I don't really know what this movie's gonna do. There's part of me that really thinks it's gonna do like forty, just because I feel like this year's box office is so down. I think that's that's pretty low. I, yeah, but I think so too. But we'll see. Yeah, till we'll next see. week. Exactly. Uh, let us know what your guys' picks are. You can hit us up on the website, which I've mentioned several times so far. Or, as always, go to our Facebook page. Uh, that's the I've Had Better Facebook page. Or hit us up on Twitter at IHB Podcast. I always do that. 
right beforehand. Yes. You just get in a roll, and I'm I just do. I don't want to stop you. You couldn't you couldn't throw it nope. out there and be you like, can, hey, jackass, we're gonna do that shit in a second. You can edit it out if you'd like. Yeah, but but I'm not gonna cut you off mid sentence. I, I could. You could save me several minutes of editing if you were just like, hey, no, we're gonna do that in a second. Nope, not happening. I'm not gonna cut you off mid sentence. Because maybe you fuck all this up and we got to use that part of it. It, it is not completely out of the realm of possibility. All right, so now you've heard our predictions and our picks. Let us know what your guys are going to do. Uh, we'll let you know in a second where you can contact us. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this episode and the I've Had Better Podcast Network on YouTube. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at IHB Podcast. And on Facebook, go like the I've Had Better Podcast page. James, tell the people where to find you. I'm in Twitter at the underscore Kaiser underscore Soze or on Facebook as Jimmy Langos. And don't forget to check out the website, www.ihbpodcast.com. And please subscribe to our iTunes, which you can find on the iTunes app and search I've Had Better Podcast. Yep, or you can just do st- even easier. You can go IHB Movies or any combination of the two. And as always, I am Dominic Zamore. You can follow me on Twitter at Dom Demore, That's D-O-M-D-E-M-O-R-E. Or on Facebook at Dominic Demore. James, how's the show today? Eh, I've had better. Good night, everybody. <laughs>